uh, I hope this will take less than 30 minutes. I uh, re-ran or uh, developed, you know, revised the, the handouts for pages four, five, and six for Wednesday's class at Old Dominion Innovation Lab. And um, thought I'd walk through, hopefully students can watch this tonight or maybe after class tomorrow. Um, anyway, here's the handouts, the new edition of pages four, five, and six. I'll, uh, I'll print copies when I get to class tomorrow. Um, I may be uh, rigging up the, that three by three snap grid was not a good idea. Uh, let me know. This time I'm going to get you closer to what I recommend settings are for professional AutoCAD operators. Turn off the grid snap. That's down here, this little screen fence looking icon. Or no, I'm sorry, it's the dot matrix is snap, snap mode. Turn that off so we, we no longer have the magnet matrix we had yesterday. Turn on dynamic input. I think that's beneficial. It shows you the length of your cursor rubber band right at your cursor. Turn on and set polar tracking to 90 degree increment. This will pop up a T square automatically when you're in, I believe, within five, five, four degrees of straight up, straight left, down, and to the right. You can still draw diagonal lines, but this will give you a straight edge when you're close to those uh, up, down, right, left angles. I also recommend turn on and set object snap tracking. These, this rigs homing devices, anytime the command prompt says specify point, uh, these five object snaps will uh, get excited. And if you're close to an endpoint of an arc or a line, the square endpoint object snap homing device will get excited. As soon as you see the square icon, click and you'll be perfectly on the endpoint of that line or arc. Midpoint's the center of a, uh, a, a line, midway down the line, that's a triangle. Center of a circle is a, a circle icon. Quadrant is a diamond icon, the top, bottom, right, left of circles. And intersection's an X where two objects intersect or the polar, uh, polar tracking dotted green line and the existing object intersect. Very nice feature, I think. Um, step one of the new handouts, we didn't turn off all these, set the midpoints. Using the line command, draw two 70 unit lines. Copy one straight down eight units. All right, we're on the 3D modeling ribbon. On the home tab, we'll use stuff from the draw and stuff from the modify. Oh, and later the extrude icon. Here's the line icon. We'll draw a line that's 70 unit. Notice it pops perfectly into the zero degree direction. Seven, zero, enter. Of course, it goes off the screen. A default view is too small to see 70 units. I'll hit enter to, to finish the line and I'll roll the IntelliMouse wheel to, to see in my, in our entire 70 unit line. And you could draw a line from this endpoint down and across, but I'd like you to exercise the copy command. So click the copy icon, select the line, hit enter. Pick any point, move your cursor straight down and type eight saying that, hey, you want the copy to be eight units below the original. Doesn't matter where your first point and second point actually are. What's important is the distance and direction between your first point and second point of the copy vector. Same with move and several other modified commands. I'll type eight and hit enter. Hit enter to finish copying. Copy keeps going until you hit enter. Okay, move your curve, wiggle your mouse, it says type a command. Now it says draw these two circles. One's 22 radius and the other's 14 radius. I can't think of a way to pr precisely do it the first time, this, especially this early in training. So let's draw the two circles concentric in open space and move them together to this endpoint. 
circle command is on the draw panel. This is the first one on the fly out, as we did Monday, circle center radius. Pick a random point and type 22 enter to get the bigger of the two circles, the 22 radius one. Click the icon again, hover around the edge of the, of the circle, and that sh tells AutoCAD, hey, you're in the middle of a circle. And there's the circle homing device object snap perfectly snapped at the center of the, the 22 radius circle. I'll click when I see that circle icon, wiggle my mouse a hair and type 14 for 14 ra unit radius, which are, are close to millimeters. This will come out a, a little bit tight on some of our big fingers making their COVID key, but uh, we'll talk about that later. 14 and hit enter. There's the two concentric circles. I'll launch the move command. I'll select them both, hit enter. I'll attach them to, to my sticky finger at the top quadrant with the diamond icon. I'm dragging them both as an assembly with my sticky finger. And then as soon as I see the square icon pop up, you know, for good measure, I'll home in, I'll move perfectly over the square. I'll just left click and that'll drop the assembly of selected objects off my sticky finger to complete the move process. Step three, I'm gonna add a little J thing at, you know, toward the end of this assembly. Uh, there is a way you could start a line with, from, from an end at a given distance, but drawing guidelines is easy enough. I'll launch the line command, draw a guideline that I'll later erase eight units to the right of that endpoint. Aim my cursor straight down using polar tracking, and that is 28 units down. Come over 16 units, come up eight. Go back to the left eight units, and then stop when I see the intersection O snap. One of one of the five ob object snaps I suggest you rig for uh, ninety percent of your your work. As soon as you see the X, click with your left mouse, hit enter or space bar to finish. Now, before you forget, let's erase this eight unit guideline here. That'll cause confusion later in the join process, if not sooner. I'll hit the erase icon, get a direct hit for good measure, select it with a regular window so only the short line is enclosed. Hit enter to complete the erase process. Step four says invoke the fillet command or in the, press the fillet icon and immediately set the radius option or radius setting to four on a brand new drawing that's zero. This is the fillet icon. So type a command it says, I'll click the fillet icon well, immediately, there it goes. Radius right now is zero. A fillet is going to put an elbow where two lines cross. And it'll truncate the, the line, the, the long lines back. So it looks like a nice uh, elbow in a piping diagram. Truncating sometimes good, sometimes bad. I, I say deal with it. You know, we'll see, we'll work with it later. Where was I? Radius, I'll, I'll click the radius option of the command. It's asking, okay, what radius do you want the elbows to be at where lines intersect? I want it to be four units. Now I can click all the points, hit enter to invoke the last use command, click to enter, pick close to, but not perfectly at the endpoints. Now between these two parallel lines, hit enter to invoke the fillet command. These are two parallel lines, so it'll build an arc whose diameter is exactly the spacing between these um, parallel lines. Hit enter to invoke last command again. I'll put a four unit radius and an elbow where those two lines meet. Now check it out. Hit enter to invoke the last use command. 
As soon as I click the second line here, it truncates the surplus of the line and thinking that, hey, I over, I drew it excessively long. I want to put an elbow between the, uh, the two lines. In a minute, we'll redraw that line, fix it. Now, uh, where are we? Uh, da, 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 step five, redraw that line. Click line icon, start at the quadrant, one of the five object snaps. See it homes in, you see a diamond because it's my cursor's very close to a top, bottom, right, left of a circle. Click to start the line. I'll take advantage of the polar tracking to draw to the left. You can draw it all the way here, but for demonstration's sake, I'm gonna stop it short to show you the fillet command will extend lines as necessary. Just hit enter. Launch the fillet command again. <clears throat> Radius is still set at four. It'll remain there till we change it again. And there it extended that short line to an elbow and then the other line goes straight down, kind of sort of like a piping diagram for architecture work. Uh, okay, I need to revise my handout. I need to draw the fillet there. Always something. Step six says draw a fillet here because this, I'm afraid this will be a stress concentration. And if we ever use this COVID key, I'm afraid the plastic might tear at that sharp concentrate, stress concentration there. So I suggest we add a little round there. And I picked 11.25 just because it thought it looked nice. Click fill it, change the radius setting from four to, what is it again? Okay, it's not on the handout. I believe it's 11.25 on the next page. Let me go to the next page. Yes. Okay. Maybe I'll change the wording of step six. 11.25. 0.25, hit enter. Okay, it confirms the new arcs are gonna be 11.25 till, till we change the radius setting. Tap where you want the elbow to start and stop. You know, in the past we've been using two lines, but it works fine between a circle and an existing line. Notice it truncated the line, but it left the circle intact. Generally, that's what you want. Uh, what else? Step eight, I believe, says trim. Get rid of this little piece of the circle between these two cutting edges. By default, 2022 says everything's a cutting edge. So click trim and click where you want to disintegrate. And it'll shave off between cutting edges or what hangs past the cutting edge if it only crosses one. Hit enter to finish the trim command. Now step 10, we'll use a new command called join because right now all of these are separate lines and separate arcs. Okay, if you try to extrude a, a line and arcs, it turns into a surface, which I got little use for. So we need to weld all of these into like a bent strap or bent wire so that one piece can extrude into the 3D solid object. I'll hit escape to deselect. Here's the, ex whoops, here's the, da, 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 the join command is on the bottom part of modify. So let me show you again, click on this little triangle to drop down the panel. I wish they'd put it on the top, but they don't ask me. Click drop down. Right there is the join icon. Or you can type join and hit enter or simply J and hit enter. And I'll click the join icon. I'll window everything. And AutoCAD will join what's joinable. Ends of arcs and lines have to be perfectly, perfectly end to end. Sometimes it's frustrating, so I'll click window everything and hit enter, click on the perimeter. Yep, so far it looks good. By the way, with one object selected, you can right click and pick the properties option. The computer may be rigged, so it's gotta be a fast 
right click, not a slow right click. And sure enough, this <clears throat> perimeter is now a polyline and it is closed. So that is an extrudable AutoCAD object. Circles are, are extrudable without any join process. I'll hit, I'll leave, I like to leave this up, but monitor space is pretty scarce on, the, on our laptops. I'll hit escape to deselect everything, launch the extrude icon and select everything to fatten it up. Hit enter when I'm done selecting. And I believe the join extrude 8.5 is what the handout step 11 says, 8.5 enter. Well, it don't look any different. Well, that's because we're look we're spray painting it with a 2D wireframe visual style. Okay, here's another visual style drop down list you might like because of the what you see is what you get sample there. But I, I tend to go for this one on the upper left of the drawing area. Change it to conceptual, and this is a a, a easy to process spray painting. Spray paints everything the, the color that the, the computer is set for right now. And drop down. Okay, next step. Uh, I jumped the process again. I forgot to do the 3D. I forgot to do step nine here alter the 3D view. Might have to make this recording a fourth time. Here's the navigation toolbar with lots and lots of zooming. And I think that's a video recorder, show motion, I don't teach that. Anyway, this drop down here is beneficial. Drop, click on the black triangle under the orbit icon. And I highly recommend free orbit. And I wish they put it first on the drop down instead of second. 3D FO enters a type in way. <clears throat> so click free orbit or otherwise one way it launched the invoke the 3D free orbit icon. 3D F 3D four bit is the entire, but 3D FO is an alias. Nice thing about this is you can roll this. I like to think of it as a plexiglass gerbil wheel you see in some movies. So you can roll your gerbil wheel and like it's floating in a bathtub and see any view. Don't set it up to a perfect southwest isometric. I don't want the Z axis to go straight up because that can cause confusion. So orient it about like this, like the handout. Hit enter to conclude 3D free orbit. We already did step 12, the visual style. Scroll down, 13 says, hey, vaporize or turn the, <clears throat> the extruded circle here in the blazes of the sun so it vaporizes out the volume that it and the outer perimeter share. And right in, inside the cylinder is both the cylinder and the extruded perimeter. So from the extruded perimeter, we want to subtract the cylinder. That's done with the <clears throat> subtract command on the solid editing panel of the home tab of the 3D modeling workspace. There's the subtract icon. And also type the word subtract enter. I'll click the icon. Now this is not intuitive, but first select the solids you want to to subtract from. In other words, select the big object first. Not as intuitive as I'd like. I'll click on the big object first, hit enter. Now it says select the solid and solids to subtract. In other words, now click on the small object that you want to turn into blazes of the sun to vaporize its volume from the big volume. I'll click, I'll hit enter, and there, there's our completed 3D solid object. Step 14, move it so it's close to the XYZ axis. Anytime you invoke a, 
Well, any when you get into the 3D view, you see where XYZ000 point is. I'll move it just for the sake of the handout, maybe move it there so that the 000 point is, is in the middle of a 3D solid object. So now by default, I believe it'll appear in dead center of the 3D printer table or bed. Last step. Uh, save both files, the DWG, that's the AutoCAD drawing, and, and the exported .stl files to your flash drive. Okay, you can't save as, I don't know why, drop down and we need to use export. Okay, so slide across to export, select other formats, because SDL is not on this first menu. Drop down the, the menu list, file, or file drawings of type list, and select STL, stereo lithography. I believe it was the first 3D printing made with some high tech liquid and laser beams that solidify pixel by pixel to build 3D models. Click the STL format, give it a name. Use your first name. I'll use Paul COVID. Yeah, what the hell? Key for good measure. First name COVID key. Make sure it's file of type STL, 3D printing, one of the few 3D printing file formats. I'll save it to documents. Either move it from documents or save it directly to your flash drive. Click save. Okay, I'm already, I want to, yes, I want to replace it with this fresh Paul COVID key.stl file. And then we open up File Explorer, uh, this PC, Documents. There is my STL file. It's only 23 kilobytes, surprisingly small. We'll take this STL file to a computer over by the vinyl cutter and um, over near the sound booth of iLab, put it in a, uh, oh, what's that called? There's a slicer software, Cura, I believe, C-U-R-A. We'll adjust about a half a dozen parameters, say in the, uh, the thickness of the 3D printing layers, as well as the width of the path. And I forget what all, I'm, I'm still learning from Melissa. But uh, make sure you got your COVID key file in STL format on your flash drive. And for good measure, save the .dwg file, which I haven't saved yet. I should have saved it every five minutes, but you got to talking too fast. <clears throat> Let me click in, in the graphics area to lose that. Uh, and you know, that concludes the uh, three pages of the COVID key exercise. Again, I'll have paper copies. So I'll replace the pages we got yesterday with these new pages. I'll double check on the couple typos I just noticed. Always something. That's it. Let me stop the recording. And I'll see you Wednesday evening. Come on. All right, how do I get this programming to stop? Blankety blanket. Oh, okay, there's the Zoom window. More uh, end meeting. We going bye bye.